All right, I'm back at it with a new video. This time I'm playing a game called Dandy Ace. So this was a game I played for the first time. I heard about it for the first time back during the Xbox Summer Game Festival and fell in love with it. I was waiting for more info to come out about it. And then I just happened to stumble across this Kickstarter page. That was that. So I've been on it, playing, enjoying the community and everything for <sighs> over a month now. And recently they just started these the beta and it is fun. They changed around a few things from the uh, demo from the demo version they have in Kickstarter, update some things, and overall it's just feeling quite nice. So as you can see, uh, right now Twitch mode isn't available yet because it's not the full game; it's just a demo. And we're going here now. You see, you may be wondering, "Whoa, you already did a run?" And yes, yeah, this is actually my third Dandy Ace video. It's the yeah, it's the first one that's gonna be public. So there you go. And so you see, I am going to do a new run here, just on normal. I can't use other modes yet because I haven't unlocked them. Yeah, uh, this game is a action roguelike, and it's an interesting part about it is the fact that it's <laughs> it's. It's kind of like a card battler, except you move around. It's kind of hard to explain because there really isn't anything much like it. And that's a big reason why I just love it so much. So we're about to start up here in a second. And well, I guess I should give like a general rundown of what's happening. So Dandy, we're playing right, the person we're playing right now is called Dandy Ace. You see this fine Dandy gentleman right here. And he's the main protagonist person we play as. And we got trapped in this mirror by none other than Lele, the green eyed magician. And he trapped us in here because he was jealous of our popularity. And let me say, this start right here is absolutely beautiful because. We get this card, uh, which is dashing dash, which is just a solid movement building. We get Titan Punch, which is absolutely amazing. And now we're going to drop Packet Trick down below Titan Punch because I don't really care too much about using it as much as I just want the extra damage from it. And so we got trapped in the mirror by Lele. There's a full, there's a whole intro video that you can watch, like playing the demo, but. This is just me guys. They also have a Discord. Uh, in fact, all these links are going to be the, below in the description. So if you like what you see, if you think you want to play the game, just check out that stuff. And get it. So then this is the actual gameplay. Yep. Like, like I said, it's a card battler. And the fact that you literally are using cards to battle, but not in the way you normally think. It's not like a game like Slay Aspire, where you use these cards as a deck builder. No, you have a you get you have a small little hand that you can use, and from that hand you use cards. Each card is registered to a certain control, and whenever you press that control, the card. Is used. And for which controls are used, you can either use a keyboard or mouse, and you can just. Check her out over here. All right, yeah, so should be, uh, go over. yeah, so like mouse and keyboard, you can actually change the little settings. Uh, controller, you can't really change it right now. Actually, you can't really, ch yeah, uh, you can't really change it right now, but you'll probably be able to once the main game starts. And as you can see, like, there's certain things that you can play. 
So then, besides that, it's... And everything is just in real time, action, lots of fun excitement. So this is Shocking Arrival, and it's a moving car, so I'm gonna put it on B. So portals allow us to jump between them. For example, if I were to go back here, bam, I'm now back here. I'm back towards the start. I can just jump right back in. There's no cooldown on portals, uh, mainly because it's really just to help you move around faster. And then this is the main portion of the game, just fighting. And not, and it's just fighting using the cards that you've collected. And one of the really interesting things about it is the fact that for every card that you have, you so it not only takes up slot, but also makes it uh, how's it going to For every card you have, you get one ability, and then on top of that, you can upgrade the cards. Like for the why the beginning of the game was, I put packet trick on the bottom of Titan Punch. So normally. As you see on the left now, right over here, Packet Trick is a card that by itself, and it has even a main card effect. The cards up on the top are main cards, right here, and the cards on the bottom are upgrade cards. Upgrade cards merely augment the main card's effects, while main cards just use their main effect. So here, by putting it on to Titan Punch, as the main card is just drop, like close stuff. I'll, I'll show it right here for a second. So I'll go look, bam. See, that's all it does there. But then if I choose to put it here at the main card, it adds the death bomb effect, which means that whenever I kill an enemy affected by it, it damages nearby enemies. And when it says affected enemy, it just means if you hit them, they get infected. So bam, like that. And Titan Punch is by and by far one of the most powerful cards in this game that I find because, well, I, so I, I would like to say this run is already over, but this run, I'm going to be going to a new area I have never seen or I've never played in before. Being in Discord for a while, I have got the opportunity to see it and I was very happy about that because it's a great looking area and I'm really excited to play it but I haven't been able to play it myself until like right now and you guys uh, will get to see it too so each of these doors you probably notice they have like a little symbol above them and you doesn't really show this so you can see them on the map too for example this right here is that clubs is a clubs key so bam right here right here has the club on symbol uh also back here we went by the spades key or door and each of them require a certain key which you can unlock by progressing through the game now right now in the spade build we are only allowed access through the first three levels which means that we're only able to get the uh diamond key and the diamond key allows us to go into any one of the diamond gates. That's actually required uh, later on because on the third floor, if you do not have a diamond key, you literally cannot progress at all. And they only have one path forward for it. So you have to get there. It's kind of like a little checkpoint system. Like, hey, if you really think you're ready, you gotta do it. So here, now I can go through a diamond gate. And the reason I want to go through the diamond gate is because by going through the diamond gate, it allows me to go into the new area that I haven't seen yet, or I haven't played through yet. Uh, the new area is called the garden, I believe. Normally, uh, when you progress like the main path, like when you play for the first time, for example, you are going to be going to the banquet hall. And the banquet hall is nice. It's probably my favorite looking stage in terms of graphics and stuff. But at the same time, it's also something I've seen so often and I've gotten more or less used to. So it's not really a big threat to me. But the garden is something I haven't played yet. I've only seen and 
a whole lot of new mechanics, new enemies, and just so much exciting stuff to be able to find out. I'm very interested, as I'm sure most people who like to play roguelites and action RPGs would be. So here, we're just regressing through and clearing out the rooms. Now, preferably, I prefer doing full clears. Uh, like, you don't have to clear anything outside of arenas and boss battles, but I like doing full clears for the reason that, one, it keeps me, like, active in the fact that by doing full clears often, I always know, like, how I'm feeling. I always am able to get a feel for my cards and this. So here, this is the portal to Courtyard. Okay. So Courtyard is that place. And I guess Garden is the third floor. And you may be wondering, oh, well, what about the other path? And so we're going to go down the other path. Uh, I, act, I have already done this like a good number of times, so I'm not going to actually go through this portal in the video, but I'll at least show the portal location so you guys can all see. Now you may have noticed the fact that this card is doing a lot of damage, and it's for... Oh, I got jump scare. Let's go. Now, if you're wondering, jump scare is one of my all-time favorite cards because it is just such a beautiful card. Because not only is it a blink, or not only is it movement, so I can just move around quickly, but it's a blink. And blinks are easily one of the most overpowered cards in the game because they allow you to skip over entire sections with ease. Like, for example, there, I can just jump over a fireball. I don't actually need to worry about like the fireball range as long as I am, as long as I have a blink up. And I just love it for that. Uh, besides that, there's not really any big thing to blink. Besides that, so here you notice this goes to the banquet hall, and the banquet hall I've been to many times. So I will not be going this time. Uh, this right here is a shop. You got cars like Resonance Cascade, which dimensional bursts. I do enjoy, it and it's tier three. I have it's a good card I can pick up really cheap right now. Uh, but. Now, I've actually, uh, I'm actually willing to pick it up just because I know how it works and I will be looking forward to using it later stage. So right now, so actually, interesting thing, normally this isn't that big of keeping my health full. But as you go through a game later, you actually can get the option of picking between cards and healing yourself back up, which you'll see up here in a second. So now we go through the portal into the courtyard. <sighs> yes, this is the girl. This or this is this is one of our assistants, Ginny Ginny. Look how stoic she is. So very stoic. She is stoic. Do you believe me? Yeah, she's stoic. Yeah. Yes. So the first stage we went through, that's just the entrance. It's nice, it's quick, it's easy. Typically speaking, if you just want to go run through it, and look at this, look at the changes in graphics. Look at the alteration, it's just great. Shall I play? Yeah. So this right here is, a, oh, this is the records right here. And it'll allow us to see information. So now as we go back over to Jenny Jenny, we, I don't really like much of the starting trinkets until we get to toughness. I don't really care much, but I get pick up Guardian Angel just because it's nice to have. And you also can't progress until you pick up. So over here at Jolly Jolly. <clears throat> Great to see you, Mr. Ace. Uh, 
we can pick up cards, we can upgrade stuff. Normally, there's not really much I would care for. However, I am willing to put into Hungry Chumper since I feel it's going to be quite important. Look at this. I'm going to t bus refill. <gasps> Nothing changed. So this, I, have, I haven't been here before, so this is going to be my first time looking at this dialogue. Let's begin. Hey, you are not supposed to be here. How long did you get in? Found this nifty red key. Check it out. That's my key. I mean, Waylay's key. I can help you get rid of it. Give it to me. No. Finders keepers, losers weepers. Fine. I thought it was well hidden for a minute. Not by me. By Lele, of course. You think this gem is a ruby? It's so dazzling. Your next stop is a courtyard, a place brimming with giant thorny vines. Legend says no magician has ever made it true. Except for the great Lele, of course. Wait, have other magicians been here before? No, you're the first. Which makes the legends true. He's not wrong, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so that was the dialogue for this portion. As we go through into courtyard. So one thing I do know, uh, in fact, I'll just actually show it. You might be wondering. Oh, dialogue. Or wait, oh, slimes. Yeah, so these things are annoying because if you go on their trail, it damages you, which means melee users beware. Because uh, that damage is something that can easily compound. Now here, if I show it like this, go. Well, first off, I can go boot and dodge over it. But normally, it takes you can take damage from that. So it's also a flaw effect. Yeah, this is a. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, this stage is uh, certainly different. Now, you see, the enemies also take some damage. That's that's like the uh, helpful thing. It's not something as simple as, oh, you take damage, you. It's not like something is, that it only hurts you. You can also use it to punish enemies as well, which is always nice. So here, for example, I... <sighs> My charm is not doing much any damage at all. So I'm actually gonna jump over here and kill that and run over. Uh -huh. Jump over. Run over. Uh -huh. Very precise, very tight. Of course, I can just walk through, but it takes some damage. So I don't really wanna do that that often. All right, we don't have a club and we won't be getting one in this version. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, uh, in fact, I didn't say it, but these are, like, these spikes right here, and you also find, you start finding these, like, from the second floor on, and they're called traps. And the thing about traps is the fact that they do damage to both you and enemies who run over them. So, they're an environmental effect which, when used properly, can be extremely useful. However, when, if, if not, like, considered properly, it can easily end your run accidentally. So, there's something to keep in mind of. Being a perfect run in this area. Titan Fist upgrade. This right here is it. So you can sell starter cards now. In earlier versions, you couldn't sell these. Uh, I mean, they don't give you much to begin with, but you always had to leave them on the ground. But now that you can sell them, it's, but even, but even then, I kind of think that you don't really need to be able to sell them because having cards that you can at least go back and get is always nice. Oh, that's, uh, those are annoying because of 
how they function means that they're very big and overplayed. And I, like, like it's like I said, I don't really need to necessarily worry about it because that's interesting. There's a statue of us here. So now we're going into a arena. We've been in one of these before, but basically arenas basically mean that when you go into them, you can only get out by defeating all the other enemies. And enemies come in round instead of, well, they normally come in round. Anyway. It really just means that you can't leave out until you've beaten all the enemies inside. And typically because there's multiple rounds, you can't really beat all the enemies inside until. Yeah, it's like the, that thing's annoying because it just drops that giant poison sludge or a slime trail. And because getting onto it damages you, it's very annoying to do it. So now I get bubble trouble, which is nice, I guess. So I'll put that. Uh, I guess I'll hear on shocking arrival. I don't need this as much. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Oh. I wouldn't mind some health right now. So I kind of don't expect to get any. Oh. Okay. Yep. So these treasure chests will always give you a magical card. <gasps> Upgrade the jump scare. That's not the best thing, but. It's nice to have. Yeah. So that alone makes that much easier to deal with. Because otherwise, they should come extremely tedious. And of course, just get rid of them all at once. So... I don't like using my pot, even if I'm playing really quick. Oh, that's annoying because, so e totems each have special effects. That totem special effect is that whenever a enemy dies in its range, they explode. And I'm sure you can realize, but uh, yeah, that can get very troublesome. Oh wow, so much health. Yeah. This is also why I got the harps because trying to fight these guys melee is very, is either time consuming or annoying. And it's always, I find it just better to have some way to help corral them like into one grouping. Oh, that's great. That's great, just knock him back in there. Hit these guys a bit, make him explode. And that whole area is clear now. Those two cupcakes really helped me just keep up my health without having to get rid of any overly valuable resources. Second round? Yes, second round. Oh, that's, that's, that's annoying. Yeah. So annoying, one of the worst parts about that is the fact that it doesn't affect enemies, that explosion, the death explosion, which means normally the using effects that will damage you both is a valid strategy, 
not so much for death explosions that only damage you. Oh, it somehow missed me. <sighs> Five of the kind is a nice trick. And uh, mm. I'll put it over bubble cluster. And also I want to put this one over here. I didn't put this right here. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I get rid of bubble cluster and oh, and our treasure chest on top. So this is useless because we're not actually we're not actually using any of these cards really, so none of them help that much. Alright, got the hearts. Which we can't go into this door, but yeah, and now we just go over all the way. So the enemies popping up about one, two, here. No? That's so nice. Yeah, I'm like really close to just running out of health. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go ahead and use my teapot because otherwise I fear I will die. Uh, very unfortunate death. Oh, it's just it's just these two. That's actually not anything at all. I, I say as I take so much more damage than I have any reason to. That's right, just stay right over there. Wait, what? Uh, actually, is there some light on the back? As you can see, this game is a uh, very action pack, action oriented, and has a lot of different stuff. I enjoy using Time Fist, so I typically use it when I can, though it's only one of many, many, many cards you can pick from. There's like. I remember there's over like 10 cards each type of each color being yellow, uh, pink, and blue. But each uh, color having their own special. For example, yellow tends to be like these status effects, pink tends to be damage cards, and blue is a uh, movement. So. so, even though it says that, the cards also can be used in. Okay, this is gonna be very annoying. Uh, I need to get rid of this thing quickly. Oh wait, oh that's that's troublesome. Yeah, see that's annoying because it doesn't actually help me much at all when that happens. So I it's actually just purely detrimental. And let's see what card we get. Shocking Arrival. I mean, it's okay. It's a different kind of dash than Dashing Dash. Uh, and focuses on like doing hex damage. Oh, that, is that, wait, was there not a Ruby Door? Oh, it was it's down there, okay. Also, even though I already cleared out this area fully, I'm quite certain I did. I just want to check down here just because of, uh, there we go, okay. All right, you know, rush. Ooh, that was risque. Yeah, so as you can see, you can clear out these entire maps. And one of the big advantages is that it gives you lots of gold. So now we're going to the central hall. Ooh. This should be the last area before this path's boss fight. Who is, well, we'll see her in soon. Oh, very soon. Yes. However, as I don't want these each uh, video to be too long, I am going to stop this video here and then pick up with a another video. Uh, it, 
I checked both. Second video should be, it'll probably be shorter, but it's just to help make things manageable.